with me. Gracious Father in heaven, as we look into this story, the parable of the wheat and the tares, I pray that you would guide us to understand things that you need us to understand from that parable. Uh, we need the, the wisdom that you gave as much or more now than they did back then. And so guide us into deeper truth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So late one evening, a man, a farmer, went to his barn with a sack. You won't find these parts in Matthew 13, but yeah, you know, your imagination. He went to, to the barn with a sack and he filled up his sack with wheat. And it was good wheat. It was good seed. He knew it would grow. Maybe he had tested a bit. I don't know. And he carried the seed to a newly prepared field. And he began to walk back and forth across the field, flinging the seed far and wide. And he had done it for many years, you could tell, because he was sowing it evenly and well. An experienced arm was at work. The field was large. It took him a while to cover the whole thing. And when he finally finished, he returned home to sleep. As he slept, though, another came with a sack of seed and sowed it also in the farmer's field. And soon the small signs of sprouting seeds began to peek through the soil. And one day some of the, the farmer's hired servants, hired hands, were out inspecting the fields, seeing how they were looking, and noticed that not everything that was coming up was wheat. They could tell the difference. And it looked as though that too had been sown by an experienced arm. And so they came to their master and they asked him, why are there so many weeds coming up? It's not like weeds were unknown, but this was different. Why aren't so many weeds coming up? It, it looks as though they were actually sown in the field. Wasn't your seed good seed? They wanted to know. The farmer right away knew what had happened. Yes, he said, it was good seed. I know it was good seed. But you're also right that it was sown. The bad seed was sown. An enemy has done this. He came at night and he sowed the bad seed among the good. And the, and the servants were astonished and dismayed. What should they do? Should they go out and, and start to pull up the weeds? No, that wouldn't do. In the process, some of the wheat might be uprooted too. And we can't risk that. And I suppose the feet tramping through the fields probably wouldn't have been that good for the wheat either. No, said the farmer, leave the weeds alone. Let them grow along with the wheat. And when the harvest comes and the difference between the wheat and the weeds is clear, at that point I will tell the harvesters to separate the two. The weeds for burning, the wheat for saving. In the parable that Jesus told, the wheat and the weeds, I suppose if you wanted to stretch the parable, could represent different things. But the primary thing that Jesus was communicating in this parable was that the wheat represents God's faithful people and the weeds represent the unfaithful. And Satan plants the unfaithful among the faithful and allows us to mature together. In telling the story, Jesus wasn't just describing the situation as it was in the past, before, or even in his current day. He was describing the situation that would exist in this world, even among his people, all the way to the end of time. And Jesus himself was a stalk of wheat surrounded by weeds. Weeds sown by Satan. And Jesus warned his followers that they too should expect hardships and difficulties in following him. And the reason is, is that the wheat grows among the weeds. Even the servants of the master himself were not able to sort out the mess. 
how much less can the wheat sort out the mess for themselves? The enemy, Satan, continually and efficiently makes a mess out of what God is trying to do. And yet, when Jesus lived among us, he didn't give up in frustration because of the weeds surrounding him. And one day, he promises that all of it will be sorted out, and each person will receive the reward he has earned, both in a positive and in a negative sense. You and I can't know who is wheat and who is weed. No one of us here can point weed, wheat, weed, wheat. We can't do it. That is left to the one who knows the heart. He's the only one possible that can do that. But even though we can't know, we do get to choose which one we will be. I get to choose whether I'm wheat or weed. And the grace of God will make it possible to be wheat. And the evidence that we have chosen to be one or the other is exhibited in the way that we treat not only the wheat around us, but also the weeds. It was another time, another place, a long time ago, when a man who had just been baptized came to me, and he was distraught. There was another person in the church who was giving him a terrible time, telling him he ought to be doing this, and he should stop doing this. And the thing is, is this man knew very well that he had a lot of growing to do. He knew that. But this person wasn't helping him. In fact, if anything, he was kind of pushing him the other direction. And I was aware that many others had similar issues, same problems. And we were trying to, to deal with the situation in proper ways and at proper times, but it's always a slow process. And so I said to the man that came to me, you know, you've been around long enough to know that we've been unable to convince this person to change his ways, but there's still something you can do. You can't change the way that he's treating you but you get to decide how you'll treat him. And apparently that was a good thing to say to him because he came back to me later and he said, you know, I've actually thought quite a bit about what you said to me. And he said that his experience completely changed. The other guy hadn't changed at all. But he had chosen to treat the other man with respect and love. And it completely changed transformed his experience. You know, one would hope that coming to church, a church filled with fellow believers, would mean that we're coming to a place of safety. It's a sanctuary after all, isn't it? Unfortunately, though, Satan is probably harder at work sowing seeds in the church than he is anywhere else. But the answer that Jesus gave us to the problem is not to rip out the weeds. That works in a garden. You can't let them grow up or <laughs> the weeds seem to win. But that's not the way that it works in the kingdom of heaven. The answer is not to rip out the weeds, even if we could identify them. And neither is the answer for the wheat to relocate, if that were even possible. The truth is, the enemy seeds, sows his seeds everywhere. There is nowhere we can go to get away from the weeds. Without attempting to judge who is wheat and who is weed, we have to come to terms with the fact that we live among both and we always will. The sight of heaven. But we're not without a safe place. There is one. And that safe place is Jesus Christ himself. He is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Make him your place of safety and then treat everyone around you, weeds, whatever, 
the way that he treated them. He, pro- he, he never promised that it's going to be easy, but he has promised to be our refuge and strength. Psalm 18.2, our scripture reading, the Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Amen. We're going to celebrate now what Jesus went through in his experience while living here on earth in his death and his resurrection on our behalf and the promise of his soon coming to rescue us from the situation in which we live. We practice open communion here. If you're not a church member, you're still very welcome to join us. We also practice the entire service, which includes the foot washing part of the ceremony. Jesus said to his disciples after he finished washing their feet, as I have done for you, do also for each other. And so we continue that tradition. And so what we're going to do is we're going to separate. We'll have a spot for men that want to be together, ladies that want to be together, and couples that would like to be together. And as you go downstairs, you will be directed to the different places where you will be. If you are not going to participate in the foot washing part of the ceremony, you're welcome to stay here. And then as soon as we're done downstairs, we will join together back up here again to take part in the bread and the juice. So if you, at this time, will um, uh, make your way downstairs, we'll do the foot washing part of the ceremony. Thank you.